Hello students. So I hope all of you will be fine. So from today we are going to start another course which will be related to the AC circuits. Previously we have studied uh, all the techniques of this electric circuit analysis in our DC circuits analysis course. Uh, but getting to know about the AC circuits is also one of the important task of your circuit analysis techniques. Okay, AC circuits behaves uh, somehow different as that of the DC circuits just because of the phases of different elements here and what elements we will use here. DC circuit elements were basically the resistive elements but now in our AC circuits what we are going to do we are going to discuss some more elements and one of those elements is this capacitor and the other element will be this inductor okay. So uh, the capacitor and inductor are basically the energy storing devices capacitor stores energy in the form of the electric field while the inductor stores energy in the form of the uh, magnetic field okay uh, this capacitor is represented by c while inductor is represented by l so uh, these are basically the two devices which are responsible for the phase change in voltages or, or other electric circuit quantities. So therefore, in order to tackle all the issues here, we are going to study the topic which is related to the phasers. Okay. So what are basically the phasers? So let me remove these things and let us let us discuss the phaser. So what is a phaser? Phaser is basically the rotating vector okay why is this called a rotating vector because it just have two quantities which are related to this so the first quantity it has basically the amplitude it has so let me have this amplitude call a absolute and it has also the rotating angle which is called theta okay so with these two quantities this factor is represented and uh, in order to represent many quantities on our circuits will we will use this one okay so what is the example so suppose we have the first quantity here in our electric circuit okay, so let me first remove it and draw it correctly okay so let us have here this is the amplitude this is the time and let us have the first uh, source here so this is basically the waveform associated with my first source similarly with other source when we, when we talked about it it has basically the waveform which is like this one okay so uh, we can see that uh, when this waveform is at zero or this curve is at zero we can see here that it is at its peak so there is a 90 degree phase shift between these two okay so there is a 90 degree phase shift or we can call it pi by 2 uh, radians phase shift between these two quantities. So in order to represent them, it is very difficult for us to represent them like these waveforms every time. So in order to represent them, what we can use, we can use the phasers. Okay. So uh, therefore, phasers will be very important and we will represent many of these quantities in the form of the phasor diagrams and uh, phasor diagram will tell us all about any circuit or all the quantities which will be related to those circuits. Okay. So uh, in order to tackle the phasors here, what is the basic thing which we should have and that is the complex analysis. or complex variables so what are basically the complex variables so uh, in complex variable we can very easily see that let us have a complex variable z which is equal to the quantity a and another quantity which is let me call it b and these are basically separated out from each other by using this j okay so that's a, that is basically the complex quantity where a is the real quantity or real uh, term here while this b is the imaginary 
term just because of this j. So, uh, here in electrical engineering we use j instead of i. So, i is basically the iota and the value of this i is minus 1 square root ok. So, uh, why do we use this j instead of i because in AC electric circuits this i is basically used for the current therefore, j is usually used in complex vari variables for representing the imaginary quantities. So, in Cartesian coordinate system we can see that any complex quantity if uh, this is the complex quantity. So, it is basically represented with these two terms. This is the real one, this is the imaginary uh, axis. So, here I can call this one, let me have here this A and this will be J and therefore, this one is basically the representation of my complex variable z. Okay? So, that is the representation of z where a plus j b is my quantity. So, in order to represent the uh, phasors, we have different representations and each representation has its own benefits and uh, uh, in many scenarios one representation is used while in other scenarios the other representation will be used. So, let us talk about those representations. Okay? So, the first representation here we have will be the rectangular one. So, rectangular form is the representation where a phasor z is basically represented by these two quantities which are a and b which we have seen previously in on our complex plane that z equal to a plus b basically represented by this one. So, here when two variables like if z 1 is equal to a 1 plus j b 1 and we have another variable that is z 2 a 2 plus j b 2. Okay? So, um, adding them or subtracting them, how we can add them and subtract them? We will just simply write them like z 1 plus z 2 or minus z 2 and real term will be added or subtracted from the real term while the imaginary term will be added or subtracted from the imaginary term. Okay? So, uh, the addition and subtraction is this is the form and here uh, this is the operation which is the addition or subtraction while uh, doing the multiplication and division it will be very difficult okay, for us to divide or multiply these two because uh, in this case we have to multiply and divide our ratio with the complex conjugate of our quantities and it will be a lengthy process. Uh, at the end it will give us the answer, but it is uh, somehow a very lengthy process. Okay? So, therefore, another very important form of the complex variable that is the trigonometric form. Okay. So, in trigonometric form, how my variable z uh, is represented? So, z is represented by a cos of theta plus a sin of theta and here in between them what we will have? We have we will basically have a term which is this j and it will make it what? It will make this complex quantity. So, uh, what will be the value of a here? So, the value of a will be here. If you want to convert it from the rectangular to the trigonometric, so the value of a will be here a square plus b square whole square root and the value of theta here will be tangent inverse of b over a. 
okay so that is the form which is also uh, the derived from from the rectangular one while we can also once we will uh, simplify it from these terms we will also get back to these terms as well okay so uh, this quantity will also be like this one once it is simplified from this one okay so here once these will be converted into the rectangular form we will see that these will also be very convenient for the addition and subtraction while not that much convenient for our multiplication and divisions okay so uh, these two forms rectangular form and trigonometric form these are uh, basically the recommended forms for the addition and subtraction while for the multiplication and division we are going to discuss some other forms okay so once if uh, we have some complex quantities or the phasors which are in some other form so in order to add two or more than two phasors in a convenient way we will have to convert them into the rectangular form or in the trigonometric form okay so uh, let us go forward so the third form here is one of the very important form and that is called the exponential form okay so uh, what is basically the exponential form so here we have seen that while converting any form from the rectangular to trigonometric form what were basically the important things this a and this theta okay so in order to represent them by using the euler's formula so according to the euler formula exponential of j uh, let me call it phi is equal to the cos of phi plus j sine of phi okay so um, when this one this uh, will be converted into the exponential one what we will get we will get here a and exponential of j theta which is also the z okay so we have seen that this in this form we have two terms one is this amplitude the other one is this theta so that is basically the exponential form okay so similarly in adding them the first column here is for the addition so adding two exponential terms or subtracting them is not that much easy if this is theta 1 and this one theta 2 and this is a 1 and here we have a 2 okay so this is not a very convenient way or convenient operation for the exponential one but if you want to multiply z1 and z2 while z1 and z2 are basically in the exponential form so what will happen you will have a exponential of d j theta 1 multiplied by a 2 exponential of j theta 2 so what will happen these two x a1 and a2 will be multiplied together a1 a2 while the if the bases are same then the exponents will be added so here i will get theta 1 plus theta 2 okay so this is for what this is for the multiplication and for the division i will also have the form which will be a 1 divided by a 2 exponential of j theta 1 minus theta 2 and you can very easily see that this is for z 1 by z 2 while here this is one for z 1 multiplied by z 2 okay uh, so this is for the multiplication and division and we have seen that exponential form is very convenient for the multiplication and division so if we have phasors in the form of the rectangular trigonometric forms and we have to multiply them together or divide them together what we have to do we will convert those quantities into the exponential forms so that multiplication and division will be easier for us okay so uh, that is the exponential form so the last one here is basically the polar form okay uh, this form is mostly used in our phasors because of the simplicity and convenience of it for the multiplication and division this polar form is basically the derived form of the exponential form so here we have seen that this 
a and theta are basically the two very important parameters of our complex uh, variable so here what we have to do we can also represent our z on the basis of the amplitude and also this angle here and for angle we have used this so that is basically the polar form of our phasors and it is also very convenient for the multiplication and division process because of its derivation from the exponential form. Uh, so these are basically all the forms of the phasors which we have seen today and we will see that uh, these are very useful for us to solve any circuit which involves the AC source. Okay? Uh, we will also discuss some calculator tricks which will be useful for us during this uh, overall series. What book we are going to follow and that is the book which is by Boyle Estate. So with the passage of time I will also introduce you you with some other tricks as well so till then take care of yourself and i'll see you with some other lectures and other circuits very soon